and there's a boatload of gear there. Um, so I got my uh, camera box there, my seating, just a fold-up pad. I had a solar panel to charge my phone and uh, camera. Uh, rain gear, just, you know, I would stuff down more, but I just kept it in that bag, grab it from behind me. This was my kind of go-to bag. It had my lunch uh, in it and then water uh, filter, poop shovel. It was just kind of my hardware bag um, and, and software, as it turned out. Um, and in here are my breakfast and dinner, and uh, in there in some bear-proof containers. I was very careful to eat away from where I was camping, so uh, I'd basically land on shore and pull out the cooking gear and cook there and then go into the bush or something a, a couple hundred yards away from where I was, camp uh, where I was eating. This was a sail, which I didn't use much. It was a round uh, piece that uh, has a, a stay in it. It would pop up to 42 inches in diameter, but strictly downwind sail, and it just wasn't that it didn't work out uh, it, it, that frequently because I didn't, you know, a lot, I discovered paddling's a lot like cycling. You're always going into the wind, it seems. So, but the times I did use it, it was pretty spectacular. I, I, I probably did about 80 or 100 miles with that uh, altogether. Um, yeah. And I used this little um, wood stove, really clever little, about six inch tall, double wall stainless steel stove made by at the time by some guy in British Columbia he actually sends it to you in a tiny little wooden crate it was pretty cool um, so it just burns um, thumb sized sticks there I brought the um, the pruners just to make that easier um, but brilliant little device burns it right down to to ash um, and you can uh, pick it up actually from the bottom and move it around if you want to and it also puts out a little bit of heat. It's it's pretty amazing, you know. It's the in the school of uh, build a big fire, stand far away, build a small fire, get close. And it really did warm me up. Uh. And then I also had this little alcohol burner stove, which just burns uh, methyl alcohol or grain alcohol, which is pretty uh, non-toxic as well. So uh, my basic goal was to leave no trace at all. And ideally, the only trace I would leave is I'd take trash that w that was there that that, that might somebody might notice was missing when I left. <clears throat> this was in Wisconsin. They had just opened uh, some uh, kayak accessible sites at state parks. There's three state parks in a row on um, sort of the north, south of the Door Peninsula. And this blue post indicated that it was a, a, a kayak site, K1. So it's part of a regular state park system. Um, and then just come up this little set of stairs there in the back, and there was a place you could pay, there was a map. Uh, or information about the park, and it had the site number. And a ranger came down shortly after that on a little ORV and registered me. So the state parks are gr are perfect, you know, perfect for a, a paddler, but it's just this hassle of having to enter and come back and all this. And and the, the site itself couldn't be simpler, you know, just a picnic table, a fireplace. And, you know, I think I had to walk a little farther than most people to use the restroom and things like that, but it was there. Um, so that was excellent, and, and it was, and it didn't cost me twenty nine dollars the way it often does when you register as a as a with an RV. And um, this was the signage on that Minnesota trail, um, and you can see this from the water. This is reflective. It has a, this is a put in from the road as well. Um, the ones where you're just camping um, would would, <clears throat> uh, would just have a sign from the water that you could see, and it wouldn't have all the information. It didn't have all the information about the. Um, proper gear and and you know what to look out for but um, there's the hammock with the tarp over it and they just installed apparently for me this brand new Thunderbox that was uh, first time that had happened usually they're they're pretty ripe but brand new um, and this is a map that has been up here a couple times but this is a you know a, a map of the that Joni McGuffin did um, of the trails that are um, the various colors are different trails around the Lake Superior. I believe Lake Superior is probably the most paddled in terms of people circumnavigating the, the, the lake. is probably the most popular or the most, the most people have done it. Uh, I picked Huron first because I couldn't find anybody who had done it, and my ego was such that I thought that would be cool. Um, Lake Michigan's only had three or four people recently that I know of. It's kind of hard to find information, but um, I don't know about Erie. A lot of people on Erie. The Erie... Nobody loves their lake more than Lake Erie. It's it's amazing. The the I, I'd go up a little river and there'd be 20 people coming out for a, a paddle. It was remarkable. 
Um, Ontario is really popular too. I encountered a couple of voyageur canoes and, um, so yeah, this was my basic philosophy. Leave nothing but footprints, um, and take nothing but pictures and trash. It was sort of my penance for camping in a lot of places. I would try and clean it up. Uh, so that's the gist of that. Um, and this is kind of what, the, what I took away from the whole trip, uh, was that water is life. That was the, um, the that, that, did it click out on me there? This was at uh, the Straits. There was a demonstration a couple days after I finished my Lake Superior trip about the, the pipeline going into the, the Straits. And that, I mean, for all the things that I want to accomplish that I can take out of this trip, it's that people, that, that water is life. That this, this is why I want people to get out and see the, these rivers and uh, so that they know that the water doesn't just come out of a tap. That if they throw trash on the street, it's going to end up in, in a waterway. And it's going to end up in us, in our, in our bodies. It's going to end up in our children. Um, so that's why I'm a supporter of this whole trail, because I think <clears throat> that, that it gets people out to see that. You don't see it from your, 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 your entertainment center, you know? You've got to get out and do it to really appreciate it. This is my slug of coffee in the morning. <laughs> this is Port Dover. Yeah, uh, Lake Erie, excuse me. Ah, yeah, good question. <laughs> I'll get to that. Uh, L Agua. Uh, pictograph, uh, Ontario. This is David Wells, if you've heard of him, he owns a naturally superior uh, outfitter in Lake Superior. This is Lake Superior. And um, <laughs> sort of my style here. Uh, Lake Erie. This is Laundry Day on Lake Superior. This is Lake Erie around Cleveland. Uh, this guy was collecting beach glass. It's tumbled glass by the, you know, broken glass. It just gets smoothed out. I was on Lake Erie. This is Lake Superior, uh, Ontario. Uh, uh, some cool people I met at um, Naturally Superior Outfitters. It's a kind of a crossroads for Canadians to traveling. Uh, Lake Erie, an egret. Lake Superior, up around Thunder Bay. <coughs> A little camping spot I pulled off on, yeah, on Lake Superior. This is 12 Mile Beach, uh, Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. This is Rocky Taconite. <laughs> this is a Silver Bay, Silver Bay uh, where I started my Superior trips. We've seen a couple photos of this today up, up on the screens. This is Pictured Rocks. This is uh, uh, Sleeping Giant Provincial Park in Ontario, Lake Superior. This was an island I paddled along outside of Thunder Bay. That was another shortcut. I didn't go into Thunder Bay. This is Grand Marais, Minnesota, and that's my wife. I'd, be, I'd still be out floating out there if it weren't for her support. Um, this is Lake Cheneau, uh, uh, Michigan, La uh, Lake Huron. So I think this is coming into Marathon, not, or, or Terrace Bay. That was Terrace Bay. This is Lake Superior. And Lake Huron, up around uh, Bruce Peninsula. Easter Island. No, this is just, uh, I, I see these rock formations and they just strike me. This is a, a, a two-hearted river section that didn't burn down, just a little pocket that didn't burn in that big fire. This is Minnesota, uh, Lake Superior. The, the water clarity is incredible. This is Cove Island uh, off of Bruce Peninsula. I, I sort of hopped across there. This guy was fishing out all alone uh, in near Munising, Michigan. Uh, pictured rocks. <coughs> uh, for sale, $45 million on Lake Superior. Maybe you can pull your resources together. This is uh, Big Bay, uh, similar area on Lake, Lake Michigan, Lake Superior. Pictured rocks again. This is my spot on the Huron Mountain Club, if you're familiar with that, in uh, uh, Lake Superior. This is Grand Haven. Uh, storm building up on Lake Superior on the Michigan side. 
picture rocks again. <coughs> this is a Tobermory up at the tip of the Bruce Peninsula, a real diving preserve. These are called haystacks. This was an island I was windbound on for about five days called Island Number 10. Sleeping Bear Dune in Michigan. And I think this is Lake, uh, Lake uh, Huron. <coughs> and I saw this guy in Michigan's Upper Peninsula on Lake Michigan, uh, Lake Superior. This is a Fresnel lens. They're kind of s rare now. They've taken them out of the lighthouses. I love days like this. This was just, like you get out and walk. It was so nice. And this is a uh, uh, sleeping bear area. National Lakeshore, ubiquitous Mylar balloon. No matter how much you love somebody, don't buy them a Mylar balloon. <laughs> uh, Holland, um, Big Red, Holland's Lighthouse, Holland, Michigan. The nefarious black fly. This is around Gary, uh, the US, near the U.S. Steel plant. Uh, Big Sable Dunes. This is that section of Erie I was talking about that just went on for miles. This is uh, Port Stanley, Lake Erie. It's a big uh, spot for the fishing boats. Mm. So this is the kind of stuff that I didn't want to go out in and didn't. <laughs> this is the Badger coming into Ludington from Manitowoc, Wisconsin on Lake Michigan. A little cormorant activity there in, uh, on Lake Ontario. This is Drumlin State Park in New York. Uh, smoke them if you got them. I met these two guys. They were quite entertaining. Um, this is an eviscerated loon. I, I didn't know what caused that until I saw a gull kind of chewing on it at the shoreline. My shadow hugging a tree. This is the National Lakeshore up uh, around Munising. If you're, if you're in a car, you're almost there. <laughs> this is one of my rescuees. I, I would pull these bugs out of the lake and let them dry out and they'd fly off. And that's how I looked at the end of the trip. <laughs> so that's it. Um, this munitions, when I said that they're throwing ordnance into the lakes, there's a large National Guard, um, <coughs> uh, what do you call it, uh, National Guard, this camp, camp, yeah, uh, uh, Fort Perry in, in, uh, in Ohio. And <coughs> the, it's, the, it's, got, it's home to the, the world's largest small arms ri uh, range, shooting range. And there's a berm at the water's edge and every, all the shooters are on the land side shooting at that berm. So, you know, in the unlikely possibility that somebody might shoot their rifle over that berm, which was, I don't it didn't look very big to me, but anyhow. Um, so they close off that, that from five, at least in the summer, from 5 to 8 p.m., from 8, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., there was an eight mile security zone that you couldn't, it was illegal to go out there in your boat in, in the event that somebody shot uh, over that berm. And, so I, I timed it so that I was going to make my get out there. Uh, I actually had to go out that way anyway because there's right next door is a, a, a nuclear plant, and there's a 24-7 security zone around all nuclear plants. There's some 30 nuclear plants on the Great Lakes. Superior is the only one without a nuclear plant. Um, and so I had to go out a mile anyway for the nuke plant, so I timed it so I got out to the mile for the nuke plant, and then I just was going to cut across. At, right at 5 o'clock, I just went. And cross my fingers that their watches were on the same, you know, thing that mine was. Um, and then I cut back in toward land after getting around this camp because the camp is off limits as well. But just down the beach from the camp, it, it, I went to land. It looked perfect. I felt like I'd landed in Florida. There were egrets and herons, and it was just beautiful. I got on the beach. I'm looking around for a spot to camp, and this didn't look too good. So I went another hundred yards up the beach, paddled up, got out, and there's a sign that says, "Caught," you know. Danger, unexploded ordnance, uh, do not disturb the ground. Um, so 
that that's what that was. It's not, and and there are still areas. Just a few years ago, there was an, an, an initiative shortly after 9/11, an initiative to open up all kinds of shooting zones in the in the Great Lakes. Uh, several, I don't know, tw 20 more or something. I, I'm not sure the number, but I know there was going to be one in our uh, right off a of little Traverse Bay, a couple miles out. They were going to it was for airplanes. They were going to shoot live ammunition into the lake. Um, and and th there was so much outroar, uh, uproar against that that, that 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 never passed. But there is still junk out there in the in the water. Since the since World War II is when it started. 